if you have a drawing that has circles that you need to snap to, such as this, let me zoom in here, these anchor points, but these are clearly not true circles. They're a polyline or some of some sorts. Uh, there's a way to work around that that'll help you get these to be circles or arcs that you can snap to. And I'm going to kind of go through that real quick uh, with AutoCAD. But the first thing you're going to do is come in here and let's isolate this layer that you know you need to put these on. So I'm going to type in the lay ISO command. Press enter. And I'm going to click on this layer. Say enter. And now the uh, anchor layer is now isolated. So now what I need to do is I need to take these polylines and sometimes they, let me explode this so you can see what they might look like. Sometimes they actually look like this, a bunch of lines that are just simple lines that you need to explode. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use Q-Select. I'm gonna explode all my polylines real quick to show you what this process would look like if this is what your drawing looked like. All right, so all these now are simple line work, which is what they came in as. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now make all of these arcs or circles. And the way you do that is through the P edit command. P edit stands for polyline edit. So I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to say M for multiple because I'm going to be selecting multiple lines to make into polylines. So M, enter. And I'm going to select my entire drawing here. And I'll say enter. Okay, so now my entire drawing is selected, and it's asking me to convert those lines and polylines, whatever, to polylines, and I'm going to say yes, and they're now converted to polylines. Okay, so I'm going to press escape just to show you what's happened. So now if I zoom in here and I highlight over the lines, you can see these are now all polylines. Yep, each one is now, instead of a line, it's a polyline. So now what I'll do is I'll go back and P-Edit, say multiple again, I'll highlight the whole drawing, say enter and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these polylines together so if any polylines connecting another polyline they're going to join and create one so I'm going to say join here I'll just say zero no need to add anything different there say enter and wait until this finishes and they're all going to join okay now they're all joined if I zoom in you'll see what I mean let me go ahead and highlight over this line you can see they're now all joined, but they're still a polyline. They're still technically a polyline, so there's still more work to be done. That's not a circle or an arc that the tool can recognize. So I'm going to go ahead and type P edit again. And this time, select multiple. Let me select the entire drawing. Enter. So this time, I have those. I'm going to now say fit. I'm going to say fit, and you'll see what this does. Okay, so it's been completed. Now, it looks a little weird because of this drawing, the... Um, there were more elements than just the circles, but let me zoom in to show you what happened. Let me zoom in. Here's where the anchor was, and if you remember, these were uh, squares of some sort before, but now they're big, huge circles. But I do know now that this is still my anchor point, and you can see it's now a 2D polyline. That's all it is, is a 2D polyline. Now what I can do, and I'll just show you on this one, I'll do it on full scale in a second, but this 2D polyline, if I highlight it, and I press explode, X for explode, or just type in explode, it's exploding it, and now if I zoom in, you'll see that yes, they're still separated, but these are now arcs, okay? And the tool will snap to the center of an arc. So I'm gonna do this on a mass scale. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my whole drawing. I'm gonna press explode. Okay, so now this should be exploded on a grand scale. I have arcs here and up here, arcs here as well, okay? So I now have it completely completed, and now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and unisolate that layer so we can see everything all together. And there's my drawing. Okay, here's my drawing, and my anchor points are still where they're supposed to be, and they're still arcs. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do a couple of cleaning commands just to kind of get this all cleaned up a little bit, such as overkill and purge. And I'm going to go ahead and get this into PLO, where I can run some point creation as well. Before I continue, I do want to go over how you can make the drawing look cleaner. Here's an example of where I did this again, where I have these large orange circles now that represent the bracket that went with these anchors. Let's say I do want to remove that. There is a way you can do that, and that's what this part of the video is going to review. And the best way to do that is to simply isolate the layer that you're going to be working on. So I'm going to simply type lay ISO. Let's isolate this arc layer again where I had my hangers, and I'll say enter. And now you can see the only things that I see are those strange arcs that I've now created. 
Well, if you observe, these arcs are obviously longer than the arcs that are within the anchor circle. Just how much longer? Well, if I click on this and I go to properties, you'll see that my arc length is units of 357.14, which is significantly bigger than the arc length over here, which is coming up at 0.589. So if I simplified this, the arc lengths for here are less than one unit. The arc lengths for the larger circles are greater than one unit. So what I can do is use Q select, so QS for Q select, and I can simply quickly select all of my arcs, so arcs, and under properties, I'm gonna base it off of arc length, and I'm simply gonna say any arc that is greater than a unit of one, and I'll say okay. And what it's gonna simply do is select all of the arcs that are greater than one, which you can see are all those large circles that I've made from the hangers. And I will now simply say delete, which remains the only elements that are less than one unit of an arc length, which are those hangers. Now I'll go ahead and unisolate all my other layers and you can see it's cleaned up now in a, in a way that is now a little bit more workable and looks better for me. So if that's something you need, hopefully you can use QSelect and follow that pattern to remove longer arc lengths and keep the shorter arc lengths. Here I have brought it into Provost Layout Office. Let's go ahead and zoom in to see these anchor points. There's the anchor point, right? It still looks separated. Okay, all those lines are still there, but what you'll notice if I go to point creation and create a point, I will be able to snap. It's gonna look a little strange, but we'll talk about it in a second. So I'm gonna have single mode on. I'm only snapping to center of circles or arcs, and I can highlight all around this, and you can see it's populating options within there. Now, the reason it looks so strange is because the, originally this object was a polyline mesh, which makes it look a little bit strange when it tries to find the center of the arc. But the, the point is, is that if I do a quick Kogo, You'll, like for instance, I'll put a point somewhere in the center here. I'm not sure which one's exactly the center. And I put another point over here. Let me do a Kogo, and you'll see that for this situation, we're talking about a sixteenth of an inch, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch um, radius between the two sides. And so if you get a point generally in the center, you're going to be bouncing around about a sixteenth tops, which is a pencil point at that point. So you should be fine. This is not going to be the same for everybody's drawing. Some people are going to have a little bit better of an experience. Maybe they're going to have larger arcs. In this case, there was just a ton of tiny little arcs in this when we exploded it. But hopefully this helps you understand that you can fix this issue by using this um, that sequence of commands. And you can see you can, for all your anchor points now, you can go ahead and plot a point. You can use temporary points on this now when you're, when you're out there in the field using this on the tablet.